Thanks for joining us this evening on TKO8 Local News. Snow, snow, and more snow, I guess, is what the forecast is showing. Uh, more snow is in the forecast depending on where you live. It could vary anywhere from a trace to up to an inch before this second system moves through the area, but cold temperatures are in store for tonight and tomorrow morning. There's a 50% chance that there is more snow uh, coming in some form over the next uh, 24 hours. A wind chill advisory is now in effect for north central Arkansas until noon on Tuesday. Arctic high pressure will pass over the area. Tonight, those northwest winds will increase to 10 to 15 miles per hour with the wind chill temperature readings as low as negative 10 to 15 degrees and the windy conditions will continue through Tuesday night until early morning Wednesday. Temperatures will be moderate Thursday as a high pressure system moves out and winds turn back to the south. We'll bring you more on the weather forecast as we get into the broadcast. 24-year-old Ashley Bentz of Yellville is now facing felony charges of terroristic threatening, aggravated assault on a family or household member, and endangering the welfare of a minor in the first degree following an incident December 28th. In that incident, a Marion County deputy was dispatched to a residence along County Road 3004 regarding a previous domestic disturbance. Upon arrival at the home, the officer was advised that Bentz had began yelling at her husband early that morning despite attempts to calm her. She reportedly threatened her husband multiple times, including threats to kill him and his parents. Bentz allegedly attempted to take the couple's vehicle to kill herself, with her husband able to take the car keys from her at the time. At this point, Bentz left the residence. Later that morning, Bentz returned to the residence where she allegedly pulled over a large entertainment center, almost striking her husband and their small child. She then attempted to forcibly remove the couple's other small child. Bentz then began hitting both her husband, uh, both her mother and father-in-law. Christina Scroggin of Mountain Home, who was convicted of manslaughter in 2015 in the death of Raul Torita, is up for another parole hearing tentatively scheduled for February the 8th. Baxter County Jer- uh, Sheriff John Montgomery, former Marion County Sheriff Joan Vickers, and 14th Judicial District Prosecuting Attorney Carrie Chisholm were at the 2016 hearing and testified against her release. Montgomery confirmed Friday he and Chisholm will be going to testify again on Wednesday. Scoggin was moved from McPherson Unit of the Arkansas Department of Correction in Newport in June of 2017 and is now in custody of the Tucker Reentry Center. According to online reports, Arkansas's Department of Correction records show Scroggins had completed programs in mental health anger management, domestic violence, and parroting since her incarceration. Scroggin was convicted in 2013 by a Marion County jury of manslaughter after the state had originally charged her with first-degree murder. Two applications from Mountain Home are among the 200 applications for medical marijuana dispensaries submitted to the Arkansas Department of Finance and Administration. A list of all of the names and proposed locations of applicants for both dispensaries and cultivation centers was released by the department on Thursday. According to the list, uh, to the list, the business names for the two Baxter County applications are Greener Findings, LLC, and Plant Family Therapeutics, LLC. The list does not indicate any applications for cultivation centers having been submitted from Baxter County at this time. Other dispensary applications from Zone 2 in North Central Arkansas include the River Valley Relief in Flippin and New Leaf Cannabis Company, LLC in Harrison. A self-imposed deadline of February 20th to uh, score the 95 cultivating applications was set with the winners to be announced at a public meeting the following week. 
USDA Rural Development recently presented the Northwest Regional Housing Authority with a check for nearly $346,000. The grant is for the 504 Housing Rehabilitation Program for the next two years. Vicki Stratton, who is the Single Family Housing Director, says that they serve 12 counties and this two-year grant will allow them to help others. The program is designed to offer rehab assistance to low-income homeowners over the age of 62 who are not able to get a repair loan. Loans can be used to repair, improve, or modernize homes or remove health and safety hazards. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a look at some headline news from around the region as TK08 News continues. It's a little spicy. With standard safety features, plenty of cargo space. That's not hot for you. No. And advanced technology. The 2018 RAV4 is ready for any adventure. Right now, get $1,500 customer cash, or qualified buyers get 0% APR for 60 months on the adventurous 2018 RAV4. Hurry in today. Toyota, let's go places. A federal judge is refusing to recuse himself from a lawsuit filed by a former colleague against Arkansas Supreme Court justices who disqualified him from the death row cases. Pulaski County Circuit Judge Wendell Griffin asked U.S. District Court Judge James Moody Jr. to step aside from the case, but Moody refused on Thursday. Griffin's lawsuit accuses the seven justices of violating state and federal laws by disqualifying him in April from presiding over cases involving the death penalty or Arkansas's lethal injection protocol. The, disqualif the disqualifications came after Griffin attended a prayer vigil outside the governor's mansion to oppose any executions. Griffin says Moody should recuse himself from the case because they once worked alongside each other. Moody maintains he'll preside over the case fairly and impartially. Little Rock police say a second suspect is in custody after the killing of a woman and her two young children. The bodies of 24-year-old Mariah Cunningham, 5-year-old Alicia Fisher, and 3-year-old Elijah Fisher were found December the 5th. Police say 25-year-old Michael Collins was arrested in Chicago on December the 8th on a probation violation warrant. Russell King, uh, Russell King Major Crimes Division Commander for the Little Rock Police said that Friday that three murder warrants have now been issued for Collins and efforts are underway to extradite him from federal detention in Oklahoma. Collins is the brother of 21-year-old William Burnell Alexander of Little Rock who was arrested last Monday as a suspect in the case. Police aren't specifying what roles they believe the two men played in those slayings. A report uh, says that almost one-fifth of Arkansans often don't know they'll get their next meal. The report by Hunger Free America says about 13% of the state's working population is considered uh, food insecure, which is the fourth highest among the 50 states and Washington, D.C. Nationwide, more than 15 million employed adults are uh, categorized as food insecure. University of Arkansas Little Rock's senior research economist George uh, Gregory, excuse me, Hamilton says that Arkansas's large rural population may explain the state's food insecurity performance. Hamilton says agriculture doesn't offer wages as high as those for specialized industry jobs or manufacturing were, uh, which has dis decreased in Arkansas over the last several years. Well, when it comes to improving health of Arkansans, a little financial help can sometimes bring big results. Applications are being accepted through Thursday, March 15th for $1,000 mini-grants through the Blue and You Foundation for a Healthier Arkansas. The grants can help organizations to grow vegetable gardens, teach 
healthy habits, build playgrounds, provide medical supplies, or help with any health improvement projects. Applicants can be notified of many grant awards within approximately five days of their applications. If a mini grant is awarded, the recipient will be asked to submit a one-page report of program results within six months. The online applications can be found at blueandyoufoundationarkansas.org. Southern states are banding together to promote civil rights tourism across the region. Fourteen states, including all of the Deep South, are joining to promote the U.S. Civil Rights Trail. It's tourism website and campaign that will highlight about 130 sites linked to the modern civil rights movement. Individual southern states have used such promotions for years now. But Alabama's tourism director, Lee Sentinel, says the states have never before joined together in a single push to bluster civil rights tourism across those states. Most states participating in the promotion are a part of the Travel South USA, which is, a, uh, which is funded by the state tourism agencies. The organization has launched civilrightstrail.com and is placing advertisements to promote the trail. <music> Well, the high temperature we got to this afternoon was only 33 degrees, right around the freezing mark, but that could be a high at least for the next couple of days because we do have a wind chill advisory, as we mentioned in our opening story, that has been put into effect until late tomorrow evening and into the early morning hours on Wednesday. We also have a travel advisory set because snow continues to fall in parts of the viewing area and will continue throughout the evening hours as well. But the danger is this cold, cold air with sub-zero temperatures when you're talking about wind chills of minus 10 to minus 15 degrees tomorrow morning. That is dangerous cold. Here's the way it looks as we move through the week. It's going to warm up eventually, so just hang in there and stay safe until it does. Tomorrow's not going to be a whole lot warmer than today anytime because it's going to start out, as I mentioned, in the negative figures. Looks like by tomorrow afternoon, we're only going to get to about 15 degrees above zero. Overnight low tomorrow night, again down near zero once again, with the wind being a major factor in those temperatures. Wednesday, sunny skies still not getting above the freezing mark. 30 degrees on Wednesday, 17 for an overnight low. Then on Thursday, sunny skies getting up to 48 degrees as we start a warm-up. Friday, sunny skies up to 50, and by Saturday, we may be around 55 degrees with a southerly flow. So if we can all just huddle up and hang in there for a couple of days, it is going to warm up eventually. But again, I do want to remind you this time, make sure if you have any pets, please bring them in or get, him, get them out of that wind somewhere where it's warm. And if you know any elderly people, anyone that may be a little sick or could have some problems with heating, please check on them because they could be in dire straits with the temperatures dropping into the negative figures. As I mentioned, wind chills minus 10 to minus 15 in the morning. That's extremely cold weather. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a look at sports from around the region as TKO8 News continues. Baby, it's cold outside, but it's hot inside Shelby's Baby Department. We have warm swaddling blankets by Little Unicorn and soft plush animals and matching reading books by Jelly Cat. Our bath accessories and unique toys by Aiden and Anae and Cloud B make great gifts. Come by to see our ever-expanding clothing and accessories for babies and toddlers by Minnetonka. And cozy pillows in a variety of colors. Our baby books help make memories to warm any cold night. And don't forget our baby registries and free gift wrap.
basketball teams played in the championship games of the Hillcrest Junior Invitational Tournament Saturday at Lynn Salem, uh, at, at, Lynn, at Lynn, I should say. Salem was able to take the girls' title in the battle between junior lady greyhounds. Salem was uh, a 38-24 winner over Sloan Hendricks. The boys' contest ended in giving Izzard County its first loss of the season as they fell to unbeaten Corning 44-32. Kobe Everett led the junior Cougars with 15 points. Izzard County drops to 18-1 on the year. Daniel Gafford scored on a pair of monster dunks late in the game, and Arkansas squeaked by Missouri 65-63 Saturday night, snapping a three-game losing streak, but it didn't come easy for the Hogs. The Razorbacks squandered an 18-point first-half lead but rallied late to pull out the win in front of a sellout crowd of a little over 18,000 in Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville. The Razorbacks returned to the court on Wednesday, facing off against Florida. University of Arkansas junior Bailey Zimmerman had a breakout game helping the Razorback women's basketball team to a Southeastern Conference road win at Auburn on Sunday afternoon. Zimmerman dropped in a uh, season-best 13 points behind three three-pointers as Arkansas knocked off the Tigers on their home court. In addition to the, her scoring, Zimmerman's defense, including a career-best eight rebounds, fueled a 24-point halftime lead that resulted in that victory. Up next, Arkansas returns home, hosting Florida on Thursday, followed by back-to-back -back road games at number 12, Missouri, on January 21st, and at number 9, South Carolina, on January 25th. Elise Johnson scored 21 points with 16 rebounds. Jared Dixon scored 15 points. And Missouri State held off Indiana State in a close one, 76-73 on Sunday. Ryan Kicklow made uh, two, two three-pointers in the last 71 seconds of the first half to put the Bears out in front. 40 to 30. Missouri State maintained most of that lead for the 10 minutes of the second half before uh, Sycamores scored to uh, closed it to a 57-54 with an 8-0 run on three pointers from Brenton Scott and Jordan Barnes and a jumper from Indro Rickman. Barnes led Indiana State with 18 points. Tariq Key scored 16 and Scott had 13. Legendary college football announcer Keith Jackson died on Friday. He was 89 years of age. Friends, associates, and fellow members of the industry took to the social media to express their sorrow and remits on the time with Jackson in past years. Referred to as the voice of college football, he called games for 50 years with ABC Sports until retiring in 2006. He and his go-to line of Whoa Nelly helped provide play-by-play -play to many classic matchups, including his final game when Texas defeated USC in a thrilling BCS championship at the Rose Bowl. He joined ABC back in 1966 when it secured the rights to college football coverage, but also covered the NFL, the NBA, the Major League Baseball program, the Olympics, NASCAR, and served as a host on Wide World of Sports. What a commentator he was, Keith Jackson. Well, that wraps up our broadcast here for this evening. Thanks for joining us. Join us Monday through Friday at 6.30 and again at 10 p.m. As we continue to bring you local news, weather, sports, and local announcements from around the area on Harrison's broadcast station, TKO Channel 8. Now stay tuned for more local events around the viewing area. And again, I want to remind you that we are going to have the coldest temperatures that we've had so far this year tonight. So please be careful out there. Temperatures getting below the zero mark, wind chills, Minus 10 to minus 15. Please take care.